Hey, it's Yay for Yarn, and today I'm going to show you how to crochet an easy summer tee. So this top is, it's basically just a very simple short sleeve top, or sleeveless top, whichever way you want to look at it, but it's, it's just made of two rectangles, one for the front and one for the back. So this pattern is extremely beginner friendly. If you can crochet a rectangle and you can work single crochet and double crochet, then you can make this top. So the first thing you're going to need for this project is the free written pattern, which is available on my blog. So click the link down below in the description box to get the free written pattern. Or you can also purchase a large print ad free printable PDF version of the pattern in my Ravelry store. So this pattern comes in all standard women's sizes. It comes in an extra small all the way up to a 5X. Those are all the sizes that the Craft Yarn Council of America gives standards for. So this pattern follows all the standard measurements from the Craft Yarn Council of America. So you're also going to need some yarn. I'm using Lion Brand ZZ Twist and this is it's called that because it is a Z twist yarn. So it is spun in the opposite direction from regular yarns, which are usually S twist or spun in the other direction. So this is Z twist yarn and it is designed specifically for crochet because sometimes S twist yarns can come untwisted when we're crocheting. So this yarn is number four worsted weight, and it is 100% acrylic, but it is very lightweight, very drapey, and it doesn't feel like acrylic at all to me. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using this yarn with a size I crochet hook. This is my Furls Odyssey purple, and I'm going to be using this one, but it doesn't matter um, what type of hook you use as long as you use the size that will get you the correct gauge for the pattern. And gauge is very important because if your gauge is off, if your stitches are too big or too small, then that can throw off the size of the pattern and your top may not fit correctly. So you'll definitely want to be sure to check your gauge before you start. And if you need to change the size of hook that you use to get the correct gauge, then that's totally okay. The important thing is not the actual hook size that you use, but the important thing is that you get the gauge correct. So you also need a pair of scissors, a measuring tape, and some yarn needles, at least one yarn needle. You don't have to have more than one, but I have several here. Um, yarn needle or blunt tapestry needle to sew it together and weave in your ends. So both the front and the back of this top are identical. So we're just basically making two rectangles and sewing them together into a top. So I'm going to be making the extra small and I am going to mention ahead of time that in my top, I am using and giving instructions for a couple of extra techniques and ways that you can make it look more professional but if you are not comfortable with those or if you're a very new beginner and you're not ready to try those out yet, that's okay because the pattern also includes um, regular instructions for how to do it the normal way um, if you are not um, ready to try out those new techniques yet. So I'm going to start making one of the panels um, for the top. The front and back are identical like I said. And I'm going to be starting with a foundation single crochet. Now this is not the same as a foundation chain, okay? So instead of starting with a foundation chain, we're going to start with a row of foundation single crochet. So foundation single crochet is a way of making the foundation chain and the first row of single crochet at the same time, except it has a lot more stretch to it than a regular foundation chain, which is why I'm using it here. So if you want more information on the foundation single crochet, I have a whole nother video on that with a free printable cheat sheet. So if you're not familiar with that technique, then you will find a link to a complete tutorial on that in the description box. But I'm going to be using the foundation single crochet instead of a foundation chain 
because I want to make sure that my edge, the bottom edge of my top, has a good amount of stretch to it. So if you do not want to use the foundation single crochet, that row of foundation single crochet is the equivalent of a foundation chain and a row of single crochet. So if you're not comfortable with the foundation single crochet, then the pattern does give instructions for um, working the foundation chain the normal way with a regular row of single crochet. So there are two different versions of row one. There is the foundation single crochet version or the regular foundation chain and then work a row of single crochet version. So you can choose which way you want to start out your project, but I'm going to use the foundation single crochet because I want that extra stretch. So I am going to start by leaving a good yard or more of a tail before I start crocheting. Now why am I doing this? Because this extra tail here is going to be our seaming yarn to join the side seams of our top. So I've left a good yard or more of tail yarn before I actually make my uh, first loop for the hook and start crocheting. So for the foundation single crochet version I'm going to chain two. And then I'm going to work a foundation single crochet in the second chain from the hook. So that means I'm going to insert my hook into the second chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, and then I'm going to yarn over, pull through one loop, that makes the chain part, and then pull through, yarn over, pull through two loops, which makes the single crochet part. So I'm going to go ahead and pull on the tail yarn to tighten up that first chain. That first, um, those two chains do not count as a stitch. So I am going to continue working more and more foundation single crochet to make the bottom edge of my piece. So for the size that I'm making, which is the extra small, I need to work 64 more foundation single crochet. So to continue working more, I'm going to turn the previous stitch over so that the bottom edge of it is facing me. And I am going to insert my crochet hook into the two strands that go across the bottom of that stitch. And it looks kind of like the top of a regular stitch. So I'm going to yarn over, pull up a loop. I'm going to yarn over, pull through one loop. And I'm going to yarn over and pull through the last two loops. That creates one more foundation single crochet. And then again, I'm going to insert my hook into the two strands that go across the bottom of the previous stitch. Yarn over, pull through one loop. Yarn over, pull through two loops. Again, insert my hook into the two strands across the bottom of the previous stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through one loop, yarn over, pull through two loops. So like I said, after that very first foundation single crochet, I was supposed to work 64 more foundation single crochet for a total of 65. So I'm going to continue working more and more of these foundation single crochets until I have a total of 65 because that is the correct amount for the size that I'm making. Alright, so that was my 65th foundation single crochet total for the entire row. Now before you go any further, you're going to need to count your stitches because you want to make sure that you actually have the correct number of stitches for that row because if you don't then it can throw off the following rows and we don't want to do that. So first I'm going to go ahead and take my tail yarn that's extra for the seaming and I'm just going to get it out of the way. So now we need to count our stitches for this first row of foundation single crochet. Now even if you chose the regular foundation chain and a row of single crochet option, you're still going to need to count your stitches. So if you don't know how to count stitches, then I do have a video on that in the description box. But you're going to need to count all the stitches in your first row to make sure you have the correct number. Alright, so I have the correct number of foundation single crochet for my size. Like I said, if you're using the regular foundation chain version of row one, then you will still need to count your stitches and make sure you have the correct number for your size. And I should mention here, um, all of the numbers that go along with the pattern in every single step 
are contained in the written pattern for all the sizes. So don't worry about having to try to figure out how big to make it if you're making it for a different size than what I'm making here, because all of those numbers are included in the free written pattern. So now we're going to begin working the rest of our rectangle here. And we're going to work row two. So for row two, first thing we're gonna do is turn the work. And I'm going to start my row with something called a chainless starting double crochet. You may have already seen my video on this, but if you haven't, then you can go check it out. There's a link to that in the description as well. But the chainless starting double crochet is a way of making a double crochet that functions like a turning chain, but it looks like a double crochet. So instead of chaining three to get to the height we need to start our row, we're going to use the chainless starting double crochet to do the same function, but it looks nicer. It looks like a double crochet and doesn't leave any gaps or wavy edges on your work. Now, if you don't want to use the chainless starting double crochet, you can substitute every place in the pattern that says chainless starting double crochet. Just use a chain three instead. But the chainless st starting double crochet is not actually that hard to do. Sometimes it takes a little practice if you've never done it before, but it is not that much different from a regular double crochet. So the first thing I'm going to do is stretch the loop on my hook until it's about the same height as a regular double crochet. And I'm going to place my index finger on the back of that loop and hold it up against the back of my hook. And I don't want to let go of this until the stitch is finished because that is what's going to help keep the twists in the right place. So I'm going to bring my hook towards me, down, and then back behind that stretched out loop of yarn. And my finger is still holding the back of that so that it doesn't come untwisted. Then I'm going to insert my hook into the same stitch that my loop was coming from. I'm going to yarn over and pull up a loop like so. Then I'm going to yarn over, pull through two loops and yarn over, pull through two loops. And that creates the chainless starting double crochet. Like I said, it does the function of a turning chain, but it looks like a double crochet. So we're going to be using this to start all of our double crochet rows. Like I said, you can substitute a chain three if you'd rather. But if you're not real familiar with the chainless starting double crochet and you want more information, go ahead and check out the video in the description box so that you can see the full demonstration on that in more detail. So the pattern tells me for row two, after I turn, I'm supposed to work a chainless starting double crochet and a regular double crochet in the same stitch that my loop was coming from. So I already worked the chainless starting double crochet, now I have to work a regular double crochet in that same stitch. So I have basically the equivalent of two double crochet in that first stitch, the one that the loop was coming from. So now I'm going to work a little bit of a, um, a sequence that we're just going to be repeating all the way across the row. So we're going to skip one stitch and work two double crochet into the next stitch. So skip one stitch and work two double crochet into the next stitch. Skip one stitch two double crochet in the next stitch and so on until we get to the end of the row or almost to the end of the row so I'm going to skip one stitch two double crochet in the next stitch and keep repeating that little sequence all the way across until I have two stitches left in the row I have worked until I have two stitches left in my row and now what we're going to do is we're going to skip the next stitch and put one double crochet in the very last stitch. So again, here's what our, our second row looks like. But we are still going to need to go through this and count all of our stitches to make sure that we have the correct number. Especially if you are a beginner, it is very important to count your stitches after every row because then you will be able to catch your mistakes if you make a mistake a lot easier if you catch it right after you made it instead of catching it 10 rows later and, you know, having to decide whether you want to rip back and fix it. 
So you're going to need to count your stitches and make sure that you still have the correct number of stitches for the size that you're making. All right, so now we're going to work row three, and for row three, we are going to turn the work, and now we're going to work something that's super duper easy called a chainless starting single crochet. So instead of starting our single crochet row with a chain one or a chain two, we're not gonna use any chain to start the row. We're just going to stretch the loop on the hook just a little bit and work a regular single crochet in the same stitch our loop was coming from. So that eliminates the need for um, having a chain one or a chain two to start our row. So I turned my work, I put a chainless starting single crochet in the same stitch, and again, if you want more information on that chainless starting single crochet, I have a video on that in the description box. And now we're just going to put a regular single crochet in each stitch across. So I'm going to single crochet in every single one of these stitches all the way across. All right, so now I am down to that very last single crochet. That's the end of row three. So again, you're going to need to go back and count all your stitches in row three to make sure you have the correct number before you continue so that if you did make a mistake somewhere that you will catch it now instead of later. Um, and now what we're going to be doing is we're going to keep repeating rows two and three over and over and over and over and over again until our rectangle is the height that we need it to be. So when I say repeat rows two and three, that means we're going to work row two, row three, row two, row three, row two, row three, and continue working them, you know, alternating back and forth. So I just finished row three. So the next row I'm going to work is row two, then I'll work row three, then I'll work row two again, and then I'll work row three, on and on and on until I get to the correct length. So we are going to continue repeating rows two and three until we have a total of the correct number of rows for the size that you want to make. So I'm making the extra small, so I need to continue repeating rows two and three until I have a total of 61 rows. Now, when I say a total of 61 rows, that includes this foundation row down here, the row one, row two, and row three. So we're not going to work 61 more rows after what I've already got right here, at least for the size that I'm making. This is an example. If you are working a different size, chances are the number of rows that you should finish at will be different. But just to explain what, the, what it means when I say repeat rows two and three until you have X number of rows, that total number of rows includes rows one, two, and three. So by the time I reach row 61 for the size that I'm making, then my piece should be approximately 22 inches long, again for the size that I'm making. And that is measured from the foundation edge all the way to the top. And I should also mention that when you finish this, when you get to the total number of rows that you need, that last row that you work should be a row three. It should be a single crochet row. So if you finish and you get to however many rows the pattern says you need for your size and you do not end with that single crochet row, then you might have miscounted your rows or you know made a mistake in your rows somewhere, um, worked the wrong row at the wrong time. But just make sure that you count your rows correctly and that you should always end with that row three because that is going to be our edging basically it's a built-in edging for the neckline of our top so we won't have to work anything extra along the neck edge because we are finishing with that single crochet row so like i said for the size extra small that i'm making i'm going to continue repeating rows two and three until my piece is 22 inches long and i have worked a total of 61 rows ending with row three all right so i have finished working all of the rows specified for the size that i am making and my piece is the correct length now um, i will say that your rectangle um, it may not measure exactly um, the finished dimensions before you block it 
because the finished measurements are taken after blocking and the gauge measurements are also taken after blocking. So you will want to take note that first of all your um, your fabric might be a tiny bit short of what the final length is supposed to be until you've blocked your work. And you probably also want to take note that the tendency of this stitch is to kind of slant slightly to one side. So your rectangle right now might not look perfectly square, or a rectangle I should say, um, because it might be a little bit slanted to one direction. But if that is the case, as long as you have all the correct number of stitches in every row, um, then that should not be a shaping issue. That doesn't mean you made a mistake. That is just the tendency of this stitch in this um, that, we're, that we're using for this project. So if your rectangle does have a little bit of a slant to it, don't worry about that too much. Just make sure that your stitches, you know, your rows are all correct. And that shouldn't be a problem because that will um, be able to be corrected when we block it because it's not a huge um, drastic slant. So now that I've finished all my rows for my panel, I'm going to go ahead and cut the yarn. And I'm going to leave a good 12 to 14 inch tail. And now we're just going to tie off by pulling the um, tail yarn through the current loop on the hook and pulling it tight to make a knot. Alright, so this is our front panel. And now I'm going to repeat all of those same instructions to make the back panel. Alright, so I now have my front panel and my back panel crocheted. And I've already gone ahead and blocked both of my panels. And this is important not only because you want to adjust any of that natural slant that this particular fabric has, um, but also because the blocking helps the fabric drape as nicely as it is capable of. And I'm telling you, this yarn is made to drape. This stuff is like perfect for lightweight summer garments. And if I didn't know, if I like if I picked up this yarn and didn't turn it over to read that it was acrylic, I would have thought this was like some kind of really soft mercerized cotton or something because the texture of this yarn is ideal for a lightweight summer garment and it drapes beautifully especially after it's blocked so if you're not familiar with blocking then you will want to go watch my how to block your knitting and crochet video and in that video I explain in more detail um, the blocking process what type of blocking method you should use depending on what type of fiber your yarn is made from since this yarn is made from acrylic I went ahead and steam blocked my panels here. Now I also recommend because of that very gentle slant that the fabric has to it before blocking, um, I would recommend that you block it to finished measurements, meaning that you measure it as you're blocking and you either pin it out to the correct dimensions and make sure that it's that the sides are straight and square before you block it. Um, or else measure it as you're blocking it and measure it, you know, lay it out and, and steam it accordingly to make sure that you are steaming out the slant that is in it. And if you are using a natural fiber or like an animal fiber, then if you're spray blocking or wet blocking your fabric, then um, just pin it so that it is not slanted because the slant is just the tendency of this particular stitch pattern and it can be corrected with blocking so that your your top won't hang crooked so now that our panels are blocked all we have left to do is sew them together and this is going to be really easy not only because we're just dealing with a rectangle for the front and a rectangle for the back but also because we're just going to be using a whip stitch and a yarn needle to sew it together so first thing you want to do is you want to lay your panels so that you have the rows going horizontally because the rows run horizontally across the top and I have both of my panels um, with the same side facing up meaning 
I don't have the wrong side facing up on one panel and the right side facing up on the other panel. I have the right side facing up on both panels. Now, neither side is technically the wrong side because both sides look nice. Um, it's just a personal preference thing which side you like better. So choose which side you like better and make sure that both, um, both panels are matching in which side is facing you as the right side when you go to assemble this. So first we're going to sew the side seams and I'm going to kind of bring this up here so that here is the extra couple yards of yarn that we started with when we began our foundation row. And I'm just going to um, unwind this little bundle of extra yarn here. But this is going to be the yarn that we use to sew our side seam with. So down here, both of these edges are foundation edges. And then I have the right side facing up on both panels so that they're both gonna match. And this is the bottom edge of the work. So what we're gonna be doing is we're going to kind of put these two edges up against each other and we're gonna whip stitch them together until we get to basically the bottom of the armhole. Now, in the pattern, there's a list of measurements so that according to the size that you're making, you can measure down um, from the top of the panel to where you want the armhole to start as far as underneath. Um, so then that way you'll know that the armhole is the correct size. Um, if you want to make it bigger or smaller, you can just by adjusting how far up you sew the side seam. But if you don't want to have to guess at it, I am giving uh, measurements in the pattern um, for that as far as um, the armhole depth or the length of the armhole opening. So here is my yarn needle and I am going to thread this length of extra yarn into my yarn needle and use it to sew up this side seam. So basically we're whip stitching. We're just going back and forth between the two panels. So my yarn starts on this side. I'm gonna come over here to this side and grab the very corner and take a stitch through both of those corners, like so. And the main thing here is that, first of all, you wanna make sure that your rows line up so that every single crochet row and every double crochet row is at the same level. So you don't wanna sew it so that it's offset like this, so that the single crochet rows butt up against a double crochet row, um, because then it will throw off the height of the front and back of your top, and it will also throw off the height of the shoulders at the top. So you just wanna make them straight and even, and make sure that your single crochet rows are lining up together, and your double crochet rows are lining up together. So again, I'm gonna come over here, take a stitch, a small stitch from the one side, and another small stitch from this side, and pull my yarn through. And again, come back to this side, take a stitch, and then grab another little stitch on the other side. And then here's my single crochet row, so I will take a stitch through the end of this single crochet row and then another stitch through the end of the single crochet row that matches on the next side. And so on until we get to the point where we're supposed to stop to create the armhole. So for the size that I'm making, the extra small, I'm supposed to stop sewing up the side seam when I am six and a half inches away from the top edge of the shoulder edge, or I guess the top edge of the rectangle. So I'm going to continue whip stitching these two edges together until I get to six and a half inches before the top edge of my panels. All right, so now I have stopped my seam at the point where here is the top edge. I have this turned sideways. But um, right here, these two are the top edges of my panels. And I'm stopping my seam 
six and a half inches below the top edges. Now that is for the size that I'm making. Again, it will be different if you're making another size. So check the pattern and make sure that you're stopping at the right distance from the top for the size that you're making. So now that is going to be the end of my side seam. And we're just going to finish off this seam by taking one more stitch right back through where we just went on the last stitch. And I'm going to go ahead and wrap the, um, the stitch around my needle a couple times to make a knot so that when I pull it through, that that will secure the end of my seam and make a knot. But this knot is going to be small enough that you won't really be able to feel it or anything in the garment. So now I can take the rest of this yarn and weave in the tail. Now I like to weave tails into the seams if possible, but you can weave it in however you like. And that is the finished side seam. So for now, I'm going to weave in my ends all at once when I'm done. So for now, I'm going to go ahead and just cut any extra yarn off of the length of that. So now I have about six to eight inches left of the tail that I can weave in later. So. Here is my first side seam. Here's the bottom edge of the work down here. Here's the first side seam and the beginning of the armhole. So now I'm going to turn it over so that it is facing wrong side up now. And now I'm going to bring these other two edges, the long edges, together in front of me, like so. And these edges will be now right sides up. And I'm going to take the little bundle of yarn that I made that was extra yarn apart so that I can use it to sew up the other side seam. So I'm just going to basically do the same thing again by bringing these two edges together and whip stitching them together, stopping at the correct place for the base of the armhole. All right, so I've got both side seams sewn together and I have turned it so that um, the one armhole slit is on this side like so and the other is on the opposite side. So this is essentially how our top is going to lay. We've got a side seam running up each side and we have a slit for each armhole. So basically this is what it looks like at this point and now we're going to sew up the shoulders. So exactly how wide you sew the shoulders is entirely up to you. Um, it's kind of a personal preference thing. Some people want a wider boat neck and some people may want a narrower boat neck and a little bit more of a shoulder seam. So that's going to be up to personal preference, but you want to make sure that you are making both shoulder seams the same on each side. So you're going to want to measure how far in that you're sewing it on each side. So I'm going to start at this side and I'm going to take the slightly shorter tail from the, um, the one top corner on this side, thread it into my yarn needle, and I'm basically going to start at the outside edge and stitch these two top edges of the panels together to a point and then stop and that's going to create our shoulder and then the space left open in between will be the neck hole. So again we're just going to be whip stitching this top edge on the one side to the top edge on the other side and we're going to be inserting our needle into the tops of the stitches from that final row. So again I'm picking up a stitch on this side and then picking up another stitch on the other side and pulling the needle through and I'm going to continue just whip stitching these two edges together until I get to the approximate shoulder length or shoulder seam width that I would like. Just make sure that you don't make the neck hole too small so that you can't pull it over your head. All right, so I'm going to take one last stitch here. That was a total of 16 stitches in. And then I'm going to take another stitch through the same spot, wrap the yarn around the needle, and then pull that through to make a knot, like so.
So now, I, since I've already tied off this yarn, I can move across to the other side and do the same thing on this side. All right, so we've got our two panels sewn together now. We've got them sewn from the bottom edge up to the underarm on each side. And then we've got them sewn at the tops on the shoulders on each side, leaving that empty space in the middle for the neck opening. And now, since our piece is already blocked, now all I have to do is weave in my ends and my top is finished. So overall, this is a super easy top to make and it works out pretty quickly with worsted weight yarn, especially this particular yarn, the ZZ Twist, because it's just so lightweight and perfect for summer garments. It doesn't even feel like, you know, as warm as a typical worsted weight sweater would be, even though this is more of a top than a sweater. It's, it doesn't feel like a sweater, like you're wearing a sweater in the summer heat. It's very lightweight, and the open fabric also helps with that lightweightness and it drapes beautifully. So I think this is a great type of top for anybody who is wanting to try a garment for the first time since it's just made of two rectangles. This is a great project for just about any skill level and I think it looks great on lots of different body types and it's really easy to customize if you need the armholes to be different height than what's given in the pattern or if you want to make a wider boat neck maybe even make it go off the shoulder if you want if you make the neck wide enough depending on how wide your shoulders are so this is very easily customizable very easy to work and perfect perfect top for any time you want something real lightweight and breezy to throw on during the summer. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. If you make this project, let me know how it turns out for you in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe, making sure you click the little bell next to the subscribe button to be notified of new videos. Thanks for watching.